Hello, welcome back to my channel, Wolf and Ghost Archives here in our video. Um, if you're a new viewer here, I mainly do one in scale videos of any car that I think looks cool. Um, I was, going to, I was mainly collecting sports cars and Ferraris for a while. And I was like, um, I veered off that path because there were so many cool other brand cars that I liked the look of and just like the styling. Um, so I thought I would just get anything that I actually quite like. Um, or any model that was quite cheap, to just do a video of. Um, so that in mind. It broadens my horizons of what models I've actually seen in person, and can give my opinion if someone else asks me about a particular said model. Or about a particular model. But anyway, today we're looking at a Mastio 118 scale Alpine Renault 1600 um, for 1600S from 1971. Um, my example of this model does the hood doesn't really like the engine. Yeah, the hood doesn't really like clo or keep them closed, which is quite a shame. Um, I'm not sure what I could do about that. I've put like. Um, Elastic bands over the hood just like so it's like has tension to put down on it, but that's not working So I'm not going to Unscrew it and try and fix it because I'm not like to break something um, This is my first ever um, Alpine and Renault um, In 118 scale or in general Well apart from a Hot Wheels car I got like the uh, Updated Alpine car. Well, got rid of that um, at the front, we've got the trans, or the um, sort of translucent fog and headlights at the um, star markers. A nice alpine lettering and the badge in the middle. Not really. Um, I wasn't really fast in being an or Renault. Um, for a while, or I wasn't really fussing getting a Renault, but then um, I've never actually uh, seen an Alpine in person, or um, one model of one. Um, and just wanted to see what it was like. I actually quite I really like the model. Um, underneath the um, front, it's not the it's not the um, hood. It's the under the front trunk. It's got the spare the spare wheel. Um, I'm guessing that's for uh, gasoline, or oil, whatever. Well, probably for gasoline. Is the engines at the back. Um, but what I'm saying about the hood, it doesn't stay closed, which is quite unfortunate. Um, I like it to close. But, oh well. Um, the side has got the Alpine letter, um, letter A in the middle of the hubcaps, um, in the middle of the wheel wheel, wheel rims. Got the sixteen hundred S and the French flag, and L A for Alpine. Um, the interior is quite decent. Um. It's nice that they've, um, instead of just being all black, this is my main problem with cars, being all black, but since they've incorporated bits of, especially the silver here and there in the car, it's actually quite nice. Um, got switches and gauges and the dashboard with all the gauges. Um, and some masters in this era, didn't actually bother putting stickers um, of detail for like, the gauges. Um, because, like, uh, what car was it? Um, the GT90 I had. I'm pretty sure it was that one. I could be wrong though. Um, the gauges didn't have any stickers or uh, like, detail on them. Which is quite strange. Um, like the one, like that silver thing beside the. There, um, I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. Probably another gauge. Um, at the rear, on the rear window, it's got um, 
um, Rally Monte Carlo, an elf. Um, which is a nice touch, didn't actually know that came, that was actually on the back window until I like, took it out, or see the model and took it out of the box. It's quite a nice touch. At the, um, the back part, it's got the air intake with this um, chrome bit here that needs cleaned. Um, Translucent tail lights, an indicator immersed in one. And the one exhaust pipe and the license plate and Alpine Renault. Now the engine is one of the coolest um, little engines I've seen from a Master model. It's really nice detailed, especially with all the uh, wires and stuff. Um, one of my favorite little engines I've seen from a cheap version models. It's almost small as the um, Porsche NR1 that I used to own. I wish I still had that one, but oh well. I'll eventually get it back sometime. Um, the driver's side, or the passenger side, it's just got a I'm not sure if that is just overspray from people, someone off from the factory spraying chrome. Oh, I'm guessing those chrome things there are air vents. Yeah, they're probably air vents. I'm not sure if that's or chrome re or overspray there is. The footwell. Oh, I've got this checkered pattern in the rear, and you can put your luggage in the back. Nice padded seats. And of course, the rear vision model. Um, my overall opinion of this model, um, it's a great little model. Great if you collect rally cars or, well, rally and such is doing like car rallies, not like off road rallies. Um, or if you collect French cars, it's a must have. Um, it's just an unusual model to be made on one hand scale, um, so that's why I bought it because it looks um, it looks interesting beside the Vector girl. Well. Uh, it's two like unusual cars, or well, actually the TVR as well. It's like three unusual cars that I've got in my collection. I currently got another one of the Vector. Um, stay tuned for an updated review of the Vector. Um, I did a video of it a while ago of the Vector, but I took it down because I didn't really like the quality of it, and back then I wasn't really, um, as you say, in the know or form or really knowledgeable about modern hand scale cars. So I was just like sort of getting into it, but um, definitely recommend this car. Um, make sure the hood can actually stay down. Like I wish I. Me beforehand because I don't really want to, don't particularly want to unscrew the whole car to fix it. Um, hopefully over time, me having more elastic bands over it, even though I know they'll probably ruin the paint eventually. Just like has some so has some or oh, tension resisting it popping up. But until next time, have a great day. Keep collecting. Um, please comment and subscribe. And follow my Instagram, it's coast underscore diecast. I'm posting more regularly on there now. And peace.